Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Terrapin Love Week. My name is Christine Kunkel. I'm the Associate Director of Alumni Events and Professional Programs at the University of Maryland Alumni Association. We're so pleased you're able to join us for today's session, Loving Your Professional Self, Would You Do Business With You? We are fortunate to have alumnus Glenn Rudin with us today to lead our session. Please submit your questions for him using the chat box located at the bottom of the Zoom panel. This session will be recorded, so if you don't wish to appear on camera, please just turn it off. Um, and now I'm delighted to introduce our speaker. Glenn Rudin, class of 81, has been working in the sales and marketing fields for more than 25 years. He specializes in messaging and personal branding. Glenn learned his sales and marketing lessons working for the Fortune 500 companies, as well as small startups he helped found. During his career, he has sold to the very largest companies in the world, and his product expertise is in the development, sourcing, manufacture, importing, and selling of a wide variety of consumer products. He regularly attends trade shows, helping companies with their booth look and message. Over the past five years, Glenn began embarking on his professional speaking career, which now has him regularly delivering this seminar, Would You Do Business With You?, at universities, libraries, and national conventions. Very excitingly, Glenn's first book is due out next month called A Brand in, hand, in Your Hand. Let's get started. Glenn, over to you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity, Christine. I'm so glad that you and I, one of the things I speak about is networking. And as a result of doing some networking with you within the Alumni Association, look at what a great opportunity uh, landed with me thanks to you. So I really appreciate that. I appreciate everybody who is here. I've got a lot of information to cover. And so what we'll do is at the end of each section, I ask for questions. We'll put them in the chat. And at, you know, at 1250, we'll go through all of your different questions. And Christine has graciously said she would allow the room to stay open. So afterward, if you want to spend more time, get more in depth on particular situations or questions that apply to you, I'm only too happy to stay here and spend that time because I really do appreciate your showing up. But let's get into the content because I do have a lot of really good stuff to cover. And keep in mind, I will go through these slides in somewhat of a hurry because I do have a lot of material and takeaways for you to grasp onto. If any of this stuff is interesting to you and you want to hear more about it, I'd love to set up individual Zoom calls with each and every one of you at your leisure and when it's convenient for you. And I'd love to be able to do that. So with no further ado, let me share my screen. Let me start my presentation for you. And let me hit my play button and off we'll go. My company is called Always Been Creative. This is an original seminar that I've put together that, as Christine said, I do in different places around the business world and country. For right now, I want you to take a deep breath and just relax. Breathe in. Breathe out. Just relax. Give yourself a little separation from whatever your day was, whatever your week was. doesn't seem so long ago that we were standing on the shore, but of course right now in the Northeast we've got a foot of snow on the ground, so oh well. Would you do business with you? Let me tell you my why. This is really important. Over the last six years out here in Long Island where I live and around New York City, I've been doing a lot of networking. And about three or four years ago, I was really frustrated for another person that I found in the networking room alongside me. This was a person who showed up like I did, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. And I, I couldn't help but feel that this was a person who really needed help. 
And the presentation he was making of himself between his elevator pitch, his appearance, his demeanor, his posture, everything that he said about himself would lead me to believe that he hadn't really taken the time to rehearse or think about it. And so at a frustration for him and empathy for him, I sat in my car that morning after I left the meeting and I said, wow, you know, if you were sitting on the other side of the table from yourself, you wouldn't do business with yourself. And so would you do business with you came out of my empathy for people who I see struggling with things like elevator pitch, personal branding, nonverbal messaging, networking, and to tell you the truth, about 75 to 80% of the people that I come in contact with have some sort of a struggle with any one of those, if not all four areas. And that's why I created this seminar. So let's move on. Guess what? In just eight seconds, that's all it takes us to evaluate you before you even get to say word one. In the real world we used to live in and the one we'll go back to before you pull out that business card, before you do the elevator pitch. It even happens just when you're walking into the room. You need to be great in eight seconds or less or your business message starts to erode before you even get a chance to start it. So welcome to would you do business with you? As I said, thanks so much to the Alumni Association, Christine and that whole team for allowing me to do this. I say if your message, sales marketing, is not crystal clear right from the get-go, including nonverbal and verbal, we won't know how to interact with you, do business with you, or refer business to you. The Greek philosopher Socrates said the unexamined life is not worth living. Let's spend a little time today examining our business lives and see what's happening. Take this cartoon in for a couple of seconds and then let's talk about it. Okay, seems comical enough, right? There's a guy on a desert island, he's having a problem spelling and the pilot who's flying by has a little bit of a comprehension problem. And so this guy is going to be left on that island. And so I ask you, is this happening to you when you're out there in the world and your message is not clear? Are you relying on us? And sometimes we're like the pilot in this picture. We're not paying attention. We've got other things on our mind. And you're yelling for health instead of help. And we don't understand that. And so we fly by opportunity lost. Don't let that happen to you. I always ask people if they can handle the truth because I've had experiences sometimes where people will say, Glenn, how was that? And in a very gentle and empathetic way, I will say, I think it could have been better and people get really insulted. But the truth is, if someone's not willing to tell you where you need to improve, then how can you possibly do it? You don't want everyone rubber stamping everything you do and telling you that it's great when potentially it isn't. So my seminar asks you questions that I hope you are asking yourself. And if you're not, maybe there will be a comprehension about that. Would you want to appear the way you do when you show up at meetings? And that includes Zoom meetings as well now. Would you believe in your own personal brand? Would you want to be pitched by yourself? And finally, networking. Would you want to network with you based on the way you treat people after you meet them? So your personal brand. You all do have one. How well you're managing it, that I don't know. Only you do. But hopefully as a result of today, you'll have a better idea of what that is. So here's some beautiful people I threw up on the screen. They've all got some really nice branding going on for them. Let me ask you this. Did you know that 55% of us judge each other based on the way we look? Now, that might say that we're shallow, but it's also a fact that you have to contend with. So if we're going to be judged on the way we look, we need to look the part that we're playing on the day that we're playing it for the people that we're meeting with. So that personal branding is really important. Here's another really interesting one. 75% of recruiters believe that the way you dress 
the way people perceive you because of that affects things like salary, promotion, assignments that you get. So think about that for a second. Here you are and you start getting, I'm over here in that real casual Friday, but now it's spilled over into casual Monday and Tuesday. I'm working from home, uh, it's okay if I'm in a t-shirt, I don't have to do my hair. Uh, you know, it's really okay. Well, the other person that you compete with said, wait a minute, I know I'm on Zoom, but you know what? It's no different to me. I want to wake up every day and I want to put my personal brand out there. I'm going to put on a tie or a shirt or whatever is appropriate for the industry that you're in. And that person might be gaining advancement that you're not just based on that personal branding and the message that they're sending out. Again, don't let that happen to you. Now, we're going to learn something about all of you over the next couple of seconds that you might not be aware of. So in the chat, if you can, I want you to share some words that come to your mind when you look at the young woman in this picture. What are some things that you think of when you see her? I don't know if we can, uh, if we can see that chat. So usually when I do the seminar, people will say young, professional, ambitious, uh, attractive, ready to do business, has her act together, all those kinds of things. And then I pose a question to them. What if I told you that this was the number one cyber thief in the US? She's wanted by the FBI. She regularly breaks into firewalls and steals identities from thousands of people around the country. You would have a really different impression of her than the one you get initially when you look at her because we judge people so quickly. Second part of this exercise, what's the first thing you think of when you see this young man? What's the first thing you think of when you see this young man? Young, tough, angry, looking for trouble, not dressed too well. So your perception of this man versus the woman you saw in the prior slide completely different. And yet, what if I told you that just the opposite? This is a guy who specializes in putting up firewalls, in recovering lost identities and things like that. Wow, you'd have a completely different impression of him. You'd say, how can I hire this guy? And that's because we all have something built into us as human beings called confirmation bias. We jump to snap decisions that we make about people, like I said, in eight seconds or less. And when that happens, it's very difficult to turn somebody around in terms of what they think of us. So what happens when you look at all the people up on the screen here? One by one by one by one. You look at each one of them and you have a different impression. Professional, young, attractive, troublemaker, too casual. Guy looks like he's really ready to do business. This guy's very, you know, casual. So my question is, what about you? And if you understand this concept or a lot of the other ones that I share with you today, is there somebody else in your sphere of influence, husband, wife, partner, son, daughter, cousin, relative, colleague, that doesn't understand how important this personal branding is and how we jump to conclusions because of our confirmation bias and potentially it's holding them back. And now because we're in the virtual world, guess what else? Not only do we bring ourselves on camera, but now we also bring this whole environment behind us. Now, of course, I'm using a green screen. I wouldn't want you to see what I have going on behind me, and so I set that up. As you can see in this picture, you still need to be neat and presentable, ready to do business, and again, putting your personal brand out there in a good way. Because if you have something like this behind you, again, just like when you don't dress for success, now your room is not dressed for success either. And what does it say about you as a potential business partner, a potential employee of somebody's, if this is the environment that you have, and I realize this one is pretty extreme. I don't even know how in the world this person shows up to work every day like that, but somewhere out there, you know somebody's got a pretty sloppy environment, and you know you've seen these on the Zoom calls that you're on. Again, be aware of that. Be aware of what that looks like. So in Zoom, of course, by now, I'm sure you realize that there's all kinds of ways to use virtual backgrounds and work on lighting and work on the way that you look on camera. And if you have issues with that, hey, hit me up. I will be only too happy to go back and forth with you and, and help you adjust what you need. You need good lighting out there because guess what else? This is another thing we see on Zoom, right? Top left corner, I'm too dark. You can see my virtual background. Top right, poor framing. It looks messy behind me. 
Bottom right, bad lighting. Only one side of my face is lit up. You can see the mess behind me in the room. And the other one on the left, bottom left, poor framing, messy. You only see half of my head. How many of us have taken the time to make sure this is what we look like? Well-centered, well-lit, and ready to do business, whether it's on camera or face-to-face. -face. So, questions on appearance. Before I finish, this is the book that I had that Christine mentioned. It's coming out in March. It's called A Brand in Your Hand. And this is one of the one of the verses. My whole book actually is done in rhyme, but it is a serious business book. And I just want to share with you, so branding that is done in a nonverbal way can be as important as the things that you say. You will tell us a lot without having to speak, and we'll get the idea with our very first peek. Second we look at you, we're already making up decisions about you. And I've got a sheet in my book like this that enables you to go in and actually take a look at your personal brand and decide what that personal brand is or what you want it to be going forward if you need to make changes on it. So those will all be coming out in my book, which I hope will be out in March. It's written, it's illustrated, it's just going through all of the logistic phases right now. So, as I mentioned, if you have questions or comments on all the things that I just covered, put them in the chat at 1250. We'll look at that chat. We'll go one by one through them. And as I said, Christine will allow us to keep the room open and I'll keep answering questions as long as anybody wants to be here and ask them. But now we're gonna move on. So let me ask you this. The last time you had to do your elevator pitch, whether it was on Zoom or in person, think about it, was there room for improvement? Do you understand the principles of the elevator pitch? I find a lot of people struggle with this. I would say in that 80% of the people that struggle with all of the things that I speak about, the elevator pitch is probably the one that they struggle with the most. They just don't really understand the concept. Let's take you through the basics. Would you want to be pitched by you based on the way you're currently speaking? It's all about preparation. Classic, right? Elevator door opens on three. I hop onto the elevator. I look next to me and who's standing there? Think about that for a second as I close the elevator doors. Is that a key client? Is that somebody that you're trying to do business with? Is that somebody that you want a big contract from? Maybe this, is it somebody famous in business? You want to meet Elon Musk or Warren Buffett and now you've got your chance. Richard Branson standing on the elevator there with you, right? Is that somebody who you really want to meet? You really want to speak to? Maybe it's a famous celebrity that you want to talk to. Well, what you do for the next 25 or 30 seconds is going to go a long way toward determining whether or not that person wants to continue a relationship with you or whether they're looking left and right and trying to figure out the minute those doors open, how quickly can they get out of that elevator because this person is just rambling on and on. And I think you all know what I'm talking about. You've seen people do that. So you have to ask yourself, what is the goal of this particular pitch that you're doing? And make no mistake about it, one elevator pitch does not fit all. Because depending on who you're speaking to and what the topic is, it's gotta be a different pitch. Give you for instance, if you're a real estate agent and you're going to a real estate convention with other real estate agents, your pitch is going to be markedly different than it would be if you were going to a convention of first time home buyers. You better have two different pitches for those two different audiences. So you need to know what the potential client, what that person needs to hear. Why is your product or service different, compelling, important? And remember, you're not trying to jam every last thing you can into this little 30 second talk. You just want to give us a taste not the entire smoothie, right? You go to the shopping mall. Again, we're going to get to do that again someday. They don't give you the whole drink. They give you a little taste. So you know what it tastes like and you say, wow, that's really good. When I'm done shopping, I want to go back and I want to get more. The elevator pitch is your sample to your business. So I use this as a great example. Because I do work in product development, people will come to me and they'll say, Glenn, I got a great idea for a brand new shampoo product. And I say, well, listen, I don't have much experience in that anymore, but I'm sure I can help you out right now. Where is it going to sell? Oh, it's going to sell in CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, Target. Where? It's going to sell in the shampoo aisle. I say, great, okay, let's take your product, and now let's look at this shelf that's out there. And what do we notice when we start looking around? 
there's no place to put this product because the shelf is fully stocked with all the products that the stores carry already. And so if I can't, or this person can't convince the buyer who buys that category for the store, what needs, that this needs to go on the shelf instead of what they have now, they say, listen, we really appreciate the work you did. Maybe at some point in the future, we'll be able to use your product. So if you get that concept, let's lose that. And I'm going to slide in an empty shelf and I'm going to call this the business services store, virtual business services store. And we all have one of these, but no one has ever asked you to think about it the way I'm going to right now. On my business services store, just like yours, I've got a space up there for an accountant. I have somebody that does my books, that files my taxes for me. He's on my shelf. And so if another accountant comes along and wants to get on the shelf, guess what? I have one. So you've got to do something great to knock my accountant off. And I'll fill in all the things that I have on my shelf. And I bet you you've got a lot of these on your shelf as well. And I bet you that a lot of you work in these different spaces as well. Maybe you sell insurance. Maybe you are a real estate agent. Maybe like me, you're a creative person, financial planner. You're an attorney. And when I've got you on my shelf, if somebody else comes along and wants to get on there, they've got to do an unbelievable job of telling me why. Because if not, I say, look, I'm sorry. I've got that covered. I don't need you. Now, the way you go about figuring out how to get on somebody's shelf is by figuring out the cores of what's important about your business and why it's different than the other people who are out there. How do you do that? This is a really useful sheet called Fleshing Out Purpose and Positioning, and I will be happy to email anybody a blank Excel spreadsheet like this so you can spend the time working on this, but it's really, really important. It is the essence of your business. It's the essence of your elevator pitch. First and foremost, why do you matter? You might be starting a brand new business. You might be in a business that's 150 years old. Does it matter? Why do you matter? What value do you bring on the highest level to your customers? And then below that, how do you do it? Why is it relevant? And most important, how is it different than the other people doing what you do? We have to be aware of our competitors out there because if we're not and we're trying to do the same thing, it goes back to the shelf I was just talking about. I've got no reason to pull something off my shelf if there's not something better. So let's figure out how you get that better. This is another great sheet that I want you also to take advantage of. Because I say in business, you've got to have 10 second grabbers, something you could say to somebody really quickly that will interest them. Very often it's the first part of your elevator pitch. Then of course you've got to have several elevator pitches and then you need some success stories. You need when you get that deeper conversation with me or whoever you're speaking to, what great success story do you have where you've taken a customer from here to here that's going to relate to me and say, wow, I want to go on that same great journey that they took that person on. So you need all three of these in your arsenal if you really want to be armed and you really want to be ready to do business out there. All too often, this is what I see. There you are on the left with the blah, blah, blahing running on and on and on, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 50 seconds, and everybody else in the room, what is she saying? Is this ever going to end? Where's my next appointment? Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. Again, this is the key, fleshing out purpose and positioning. So let's talk about breaking down the elevator pitch. I know it's only 30 seconds, and so this is going to be really, really easy. First and foremost, your opening statement. What's the first thing you say? And again, keep in mind, after your nonverbal branding and messaging, looks like you're really ready to do business, right? You need to open strong. Why does your business matter? Why does it exist? So I often say to people, are you one of the people that struggles with your elevator pitch? That usually gets a lot of people thinking internally. They don't want to say it out loud, but that usually gets their attention and they start leaning in to hear more. Or I'll say, did you know that 80% of the people I come in contact with can't do an elevator pitch properly? Same thing. They start thinking, hmm, I just did mine. I wonder if he's speaking to me. So I help people with their elevator pitch. I help people figure out their messaging. That's what I do. And people very often will come up to me afterward and say, wow, I wish I could do that like you. Well, you can, right? You've got to figure out how your organization can help other people fix their problems. And 
very important. You've got to be enthusiastic about what you do. Now, when you leave here today, we may or may not be in contact with each other down the road. I certainly hope we're all in contact with one another. But one thing I want you to remember about me when we're done, wow, this guy's really enthusiastic about stuff like elevator pitch and networking. He really was. He really believes it with all this heart and soul, and I do. Because if you can't get excited about it, why should we? If you're tired of talking about it, and that's easy to get, why should we be interested in it? So the opening is really key, and I really feel if you don't get someone with the opening, it's really hard to reel them back in in the last part of the elevator pitch. Another key, please lose the fillers. You know, give us a good stat, a good figure. Again, I say 80% of the people I know struggle with elevator pitch. What's a key statistic about your business? Think about that. It's not really that hard to find, and, and you can do some research and find that out. But I say to people, where is the beef? What's different about what you do? Quick example, Burger King. Between Burger King, McDonald's, and Wendy's, the big three hamburger chains in our country and in the world, Burger King has always differentiated themselves with flame broiling. That's why I've got a burger up on the grill there. They are the only ones that serve burgers that taste flame broiled. That's their point of difference. Yes, they have other marketing messages, but that's the key for them. So lose the filler. Stop saying things like we're a full service, fill in the blank. Full service what? I can drop my dry cleaning off? I don't think so. Second part of any good elevator pitch, what's your unique selling proposition? Again, for me, I help people fix bad messaging. There aren't a lot of people out there that do that. It is fairly unique in terms of the world that I go to and the people that I network with. So what can you offer? Faster turnaround timing, better quality, free advice, no cost evaluations, key market statistics. People love getting free things. Maybe there's a free portion of what you do that you can throw in and say that right now I'm actually doing free evaluations for people. So unique selling proposition, USP, you hear that also? People want to lean in and look further. And then finally, engagement. Engagement. You want people to lean in and you want them thinking, wow, that was really interesting. I want to hear more about that. Again, that little taste that little taste that brings somebody back. That's all the elevator pitch is supposed to do. So enthusiasm, a good fact, an engagement statement, a yes or no that gets someone thinking, is he or she talking to me? And then they like what they're hearing and they want to hear more. Look, we just had the Super Bowl. Now, this is a typical play for a football team. Look at the top. It's all written out. Look at the bottom. It's reduced to five words. It's simplified so the guys or women on the field know exactly what the quarterback is talking about. Because none other than Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it simple enough, you don't understand it well enough. You got to go back to the drawing board, break it down so that we can really understand what it is you're speaking about. And remember, you're the one who's immersed in your subject area. We're not. You've got to get us interested in what it is you do Again, by giving us that little taste. So next up, I always like to say lights, camera, action. You've got to take that sheet that I'm going to share with you, that fleshing out purpose position, and you're going to create your own commercial. And it's going to be a 30 second commercial because if you watch some TV after my presentation today, you'll start to understand whether it's car companies, drug companies, reverse mortgage companies, they all do this. They establish a fact. I'll use the drug companies as a perfect example. Did you know you've got shaky hand syndrome? And all of a sudden I start thinking, wait a minute, my hand does shake every once in a while. Maybe I do have that. And then they spend the next 20 seconds telling me about how their drug is going to treat it, how it may kill me, and how I can get it through my insurance. And sure enough, by the end of the thing, I'm looking for the phone. I've got shaky hand syndrome. How am I going to get over this? So you are a commercial director for yourself. And you know what? You've got one of these. You've got one of these where you can film yourself. It'll tell you the time and you can look at yourself. Are you looking right at the camera? Are you believable? Right? Here's me early in the morning before one of these BNI meetings, seven o'clock in the morning. Now I'm someone who does this for a living, but I'm still out there and I'm working on my elevator pitch, right? I mean, I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing. It's just the point. Practice, practice, and practice. That's how you get good at doing an elevator pitch. And so even somebody who's so afraid 
of going out on stage or making a fool of themselves for whatever reason, it's unnecessary. Because if you take the time, you get in front of a mirror, you use your phone, and then you can find somebody like me, who's a colleague, who will work with you and say, wow, slow it down a little bit, throw a different fact in there, try something different, let's look at your posture, then you'll get to a point where you're doing your elevator pitches like a pro. And you won't believe the difference from the first time you record yourself, don't erase that, until where you are after you've gone through these exercises that I'm telling you about. Remember, elevator pitching are their performances, right? Think about it. You are on stage, and I would urge you when we get back in person someday, stand up when you do your elevator pitch. I don't care if anybody else in the room does. You stand out. You believe in yourself. You have an audience. Hopefully you're in costume. We've already talked about that. And you've got a script. Do your performance just like you would on a Broadway stage. You know like I do, if you went to see Hamilton in New York, wow, it's really super expensive, right? Four or $500. If you sat there in the front row and Lynn manuel Miranda, the star, came out and he muttered his lines and he wasn't in costume, wow, you'd be looking around saying, who do I speak to? I want to get my money back. This isn't the performance that I wanted. Your elevator pitch is the same way. You be the star of the show. Let people walk away and say, wow, she was unbelievable today. Where did that come from? And that's going to be it going forward. So if you've got questions or comments on what I just covered for elevator pitch, throw them in the chat. We'll talk about them in about 15, 20 minutes. Otherwise, we're going to roll on. Look at this. What is this all about? Networking. Do you actively network? Do you get out there? Do you understand what networking is all about? Question, would you network with yourself? That's really what I want to know. So what's networking really all about? It's real, really all about meeting Glenn Rudin on this call today. How am I going to follow up with him if I want to know more about what he does or he wants to know more about what I do? How am I going to do that? Well, he's now a contact. I know his information. I know where to find him. If not, Christine will certainly drag me out of wherever I'm hiding and she'll help you get me. But if that's true, then you're going to turn the contact with me into a connection for you. And the only way to do that is through extended conversations. Now, one of the upsides of the pandemic has been everybody learning how to do this virtually, having virtual conversations. I can see you. You can see me. We can have conversations. We can share screens. I still like the face-to-face -face stuff better myself, but it'll still work. So meet somebody for coffee over a Zoom call, right? It's not going to hurt. It's a great way to get to know someone and really get into an extended conversation. And it's a great way for them to start building trust in who you are and what you do so that they know they can rely on you if, in fact, they want to refer you to somebody or they want to refer business to you. And, of course, the numbers are powerful, right? There I am. But guess what? Once we connect after this phone call today, you've got access to, I don't even know how many people. I've got over a thousand people I'm quote unquote connected with on LinkedIn. I don't know who I could introduce you to until we have a conversation. But just think about all the people that you know as a result of knowing me and me knowing you. So networking is really all about building that trust and that relationship. So I feel like, wow, I know Christine really well now. We've had a couple of conversations on here. I would refer her to a lot of different people and I hope she would do the same thing for me. But that's only because we took the time to have first a regular phone call, then a Zoom phone call, and look where we are today. She's given me this wonderful platform to work with all of you. So this is how I want you to think of the different things that we spoke about today. What is your total success factor in a new item that I'm developing here called MBE. What's your margin of brand erosion? And I'm going to further develop this down the road. So if you want more information on this, certainly get on my email list. I'm going to send it out. But to keep it simple right now, let's look at the topics I covered today. Personal branding, appearance, elevator pitch, networking, and let's say each one of those had a total score that you could get of 25 points, 
25% for each of those. Now, if you're doing a great job in all of them, your margin of brand erosion is zero. And that's great. That means you're out there, you're a great networker, you understand personal branding, you've got a great elevator pitch, you understand appearance and personal branding, it's wonderful, right? In this particular case, the, the case scenario here, the case study, this person's falling a little bit short in networking. So they've got 10% erosion from their total score. No reason they can't bring that up. No reason you can't bring all of these up to 100, and that's really the idea. But what happens if you've got a total challenge on your hands? How much is this person eroding their margin of brand erosion? In this case, they've got 15% at a 25 in personal branding. They've got 15% on their appearance at a 25, 15% on elevator pitch, and they don't do a very good job networking. Well, guess what? They've got a 45% margin of brand erosion. And so they're really fighting against the current. This is that scenario earlier that I mentioned with the pilot and the effort that you're putting out there. This is a person who's really relying on everybody else they come in contact with to give them a break, to say, oh, I know your elevator pitch wasn't that good, but I think maybe you have something good to offer. Or I know you probably dress up better other times when you see people. Or I know you're not a phony and we're really going to be good business friends. But aren't we asking an awful lot of ourselves if this is the effort that somebody's putting in? So if this is you and you know you need help in these areas, listen, you don't have to get it from me. There's a lot of people out there, I think, that do what I do. They might not be as passionate about it as I am, but get help, figure it out. Find somebody who in a nice, empathetic way will tell you the truth about the efforts that you're making out there. Because my takeaways for today are things like, are you giving yourself the best chance to succeed? In today's seminar, I'm asking you to look at your appearance, the nonverbal branding. Are you dressing for success or does your wardrobe need to be refocused? And it doesn't have to be a lot of money, but just think about the message you're giving out before you even get to utter word one. And what does your appearance look like on screen? Do you need better lighting? Do you need a better camera? Do you need a better setup so that you look really super professional? These are all relatively easy, relatively low cost things that you can work on. How about your elevator pitch? Do you know what that pitch is? Do you know why your business is different? Do you know how you can help the people you're looking to help get something that they don't get now from the person or company or business that's already on their shelf? If not, listen, you got to sit down and you got to spend some time thinking about this. And again, I'd be happy to brainstorm with anybody on the call today or anybody else you might know that might need help with this. And, and not for money, just because the connection here with Marilyn, let's help you out. Let's help you out. Maybe you'll, there's something you'll be able to help me out with later on. Maybe there's another place that you want to see me speaking or you know somebody looking for a speaker and you liked what I had to say today. And finally, networking. Are you building a really solid network of business friends who are looking out for you? The kinds of people that you have in your life that in your personal life you might call a sister or a brother or somebody that you went to Maryland with who's a real old friend. Those are the kind of friends that you need in the business world also. So I'll tell you just a quick story about networking. I don't know how many people are familiar with the new app Clubhouse, so I've been on there dabbling a bit. And I met somebody uh, the other day who lives in the UK. This is a great example of how our world works today. And she happened to hear somebody saying something to me relatively mean on this app. And listen, it can happen anywhere. And again, she's from the UK. So she looked me up, she found me on my Instagram contact and said, what that person did to you was really rude. And I wrote back and I said, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your having my back. Would you like to have a Zoom conversation? And she said yes. And the next thing you knew, we were on a Zoom call the other day for two hours. And I, when we were done, I had helped her so much with her website and her copy and the way she thought about the world that when we were done with the call, she said to me, 
I really want to wire you some money. And I said, whoa, I didn't do this for money. I did this because you were really nice to me and you really had my back. You were really empathetic. She's like, no, 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 I want to wire you, you know, at least 200 pounds. And I said, no, 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 I, I didn't come on this call to collect money from you. But what I would like to know is that we're business friends and that going forward, we're going to stay in contact with one another. And if you know somebody else who I can help, you'll refer me. If you know a place where they're looking for a speaker and you like the way I spoke to you, maybe you'll refer me. That's a great story about how I showed up ready to do business with her, looked the part, spoke the part, had the good elevator pitch so she appreciated what I did, and she wants to follow up further. Those are the kinds of stories that I want to hear from you and about you. Bottom line, only you can determine if you, and keep this in mind, if you've got a company and you have people who work on your staff, if they're out there and they're doing their own elevator pitches, oh boy, you better get a hold of that and figure out what message they're giving out when you go through that fleshing out purpose and positioning. It's really, really important. But if you need action, if you, you know, need to take action, do it. Don't sit around waiting. It's just not going to happen. This is something you can do. I know you can. Every impression that you make counts towards something else that you're going to do regardless of what your endeavor is. And I would like every one of you to be able to answer in the complete enthusiastic affirmative when I say, would you do business with you? Yeah, Glenn, I would do business with myself. I took the time to think about it. I've got it all buttoned up now. I know what I needed to work on and I'm ready to go. So yes, I would do business with myself. So thank you again to Christine and University of Maryland. This is my contact information. Again, Christine knows how to get in touch with me. You can go to my website. You can write to me, glenn at alwaysbeencreative.com. I am a certified e-speaker. If you like my s seminar today and you know somebody else who could use this kind of information and it would be helpful for them, listen, I, I appreciate the, uh, the thought. So what we're going to do now is say thank you. And we're going to put the big light bulb up there and we're going to go ahead and end the share. And we've got, I think, a good 10, 12 minutes at least to get into the chat with anybody who's here and go ahead and see if we can help everybody out. So let's stop sharing. And there I am back on screen. Okay. So, um, Christine, I assume you're there. I'm here. There she is. And so where do we want to start? We do have some questions here. We do. We have some questions in the chat. Um, and I can read those out. Or Glenn, if you want to field them yourself, either way. Okay. So, so Jacqueline, did you want to ask your question live or just use the chat? Oh, I'm here. I just, okay. I was trying to undo the video, but... It seems that I can't. So you never okay. really. So oh, wait, tell me you're what your your point is there. Tell me what you're hip and not interested in what people think. Oh, that was the response to uh, the question about what did the young man look like. Oh, OK, because, good, 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 good. Yes, because uh, that <laughs> that's probably true. Um, <laughs> not necessarily a positive thing. And again, you understand, right? That's your impression of him just by looking at him. He never even got to utter a word and, and he can't even defend himself. Right. Right. Um, right. Excellent. Excellent. So, so did that, did that point resonate with you? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I've always, I've always been an individual who has paid attention to those first few moments impression and I like fashion anyway, so it works quite well. Excellent. But yes. Excellent. Okay. Do. So here's uh, Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn is saying just starting out as an education consultant after retiring two and a half years ago, feel stuck in differentiating and trying to come up with a good elevator pitch advice. Well, it, it's hard generically to just throw something out there, Gwendolyn, but um, if, if you're somebody who's got an educational background, is there something that you can call on that you've done in the past that will stand out from the other people that are in your space? Is there a way for you, I don't know what area of education you're in, but maybe you want to be educating people on the kinds of topics that I'm talking about here today. There's, there's plenty of room uh, in that space. Matter of fact, my book uh, that's coming out is really based on that. Um, 
I've done several free presentations. That's outstanding. Uh, you know, keep doing those and keep refining what you do. Uh, hit me up after this and, and let's talk about it. I'm sure once I get a better understanding of your background, what your specialty is, I bet you I can give you a couple of really good ideas about how to differentiate what you do versus everybody else. Free is always good. You know, if you could get um, parents to let you have 15 minutes on a Zoom call with them to do some kind of free intake and try and understand what somebody does, that might be, that might be part of it. Um, let's see, how do you assess the percentages? Uh, great question, Jack, on that. I'm, I'm working on that now and I will have a more detailed form that will let you give yourself scores, a couple of points for this, or not a couple of points, and then you'll be able to come up to that actual raw score. Uh, sorry, I have to leave. Thanks so much for the presentation. Sorry we saw you go, Erin. Uh, Isabel, uh, that person was me. Um, Glenn was fantastic, uh, helping me. Forever grateful. I'll be in touch for sure. Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, Michelle, did you want to ask your question live or have me just answer it? Michelle, going once, going twice, okay. I'm a senior level executive and the only way I've gotten any interview traction on my job search is through colleagues connecting second level via LinkedIn. Uh, it's an absolute must, of course, absolutely. And you know what? Um, Lunch Club is great. This is the thing, you know, you can network virtually anywhere in the country now uh, and with jobs being virtual, you just really never know what you might find. So uh, it's a great point, Michelle. And still to this day, most people are not going to find jobs as a result of using Indeed or one of these services where there's literally thousands of people looking at every job out there. It's gonna be through creating business connections. It might not be immediate, it might take a little time, but step by step, if you can break through and have rock solid conversations, that's really how it's going to happen. And people are then really going to be able to appreciate you much more than any resume or cover letter uh, can speak to you. So thank you for agreeing, I appreciate that. Shirley, did you wanna come on and ask your question? Hi, yes, this is Shirley and Glenn. Thank you um, for, for doing this session. It, it's, it, it's been really interesting, but um, yeah, just, you know, my, my question was, you know, with the current environment, so we've been, you know, do we've been remote, um, you know, for a whole year, pretty much more than a year now, um, you know, definitely a lot of people are getting that Zoom fatigue, digital fatigue, you know, it's like, oh, another phone call, another Zoom conference, just, you know, it, it it's starting to get a little difficult, um, you know, and I just wanted to, you know, kind of see, you know, from your point of view, you know, with all of this current environment, people getting kind of just really sick of, um, you know, another Zoom call, um, you know, kind of what advice would you give, right, in this current environment to, you know, have us, you know, more engaging, right, with our clients um, and, and networking, pretty much. You know. Right. So, okay. So, and this is what I say in terms of how could we, as, um, as a society, not have Zoom fatigue? If I challenge the, the 20 people who are still on the call with me right now, with you right now, and I said, tonight, I've put together a reel of terrible local cable commercials. So it's gonna be the family that owns the car dealership. It's gonna be paving stone. It's gonna be a plumber, an HVAC. It's gonna be a slip and fall attorney. It's gonna be this, this, that. It's, and it's gonna be 30 of them in a row. How many people could really take it if I said, we're gonna make you sit down and watch 30 bad commercials? And keep in mind, those commercials are at least produced by a video company. So now if you take it from that level and you bring it down a whole other level and you say, wow, I'm now gonna to have to sit through a networking call where the moderator doesn't do a great job and the people on the call are all different levels of really not too good. How could we not have Zoom fatigue? And so the only thing that you can do, only thing that you can do is you can bring your A game to those calls. You can figure out how to use Zoom and make it more interactive by sharing, you know, really good slides that you've developed you can create a more interesting but not disturbing background that makes you stand out. And so if you come on 
and you look like you're on the Today Show or you're on fill in the blank, whatever your favorite commentator show is, ESPN or the Big Ten Network or decorating shows or cooking shows, if you come across like you're a media star, you can't control what everybody else on that call is doing, but you can certainly look like a star and stand out. It's really not that difficult to do if you take the time and energy to put into it. What happens with the other people on the call? There's nothing you can do about them other than really bursting off the screen with them in terms of your enthusiasm and creating the best presence that you have for you. That's, that's the best advice I could give you. And I would say seek out other networking groups as well where you're going to be meeting new people. Uh, matter of fact, one of the things I've done is I've been looking up American Marketing Association meetings around the country because they very often have subject matter that's interesting to me. And so I've met people from Atlanta, from Chicago, from Los Angeles, and it's been a great way to uh, network with new people and not the same old people that I know here in Long Island. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but I know a lot of them. And so I do have Zoom fatigue on those calls. So that's a great question. Hopefully that answered it for you. Yes, it was great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? I see some nice thank yous and I always appreciate that. Um, you know, just the comment. Um, look, uh, as I said earlier, it, it's 1255. I like to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to ask a question, to get out of here on time. I am only too willing to stay as long as anybody else on the call wants to. If you've got to leave because you've got other appointments, you've got to go back to work, uh, you've got a lunch date, or you got to take care of your kids, etc. Et fill in the blank. Uh, I'm only too happy. If you liked what you heard today, I'd love to hear from you. Write to me. I'd love to be in contact with every single one of you. Love to add you to my business network. And remember, would you do business with you is a question that we all should be asking each other all the time, all the time. There's always room for improvement. Um, just one quick plug. My book will be coming out next month, uh, a brand in your hand. And the entire book is fully illustrated. It's fully written in rhyme, but it is a serious business book that touches on all of the topics that are near and dear to me. There are worksheets throughout it, which will challenge you about personal branding and things. So for anybody right now who is starting a business, uh, knows a young person who's just getting out of school, it'll be a great, great book to really open your eyes because what I like to say about that, and I'll close with this, is we, most of us, most of us in the world, end up in what I call the sea of life. We end up getting tossed in, we get out of the University of Maryland. Some of us have a really good idea of what we wanna do. A lot of us don't. And we kind of drift along in the ocean of life and then one day we kind of wash ashore. That's the job we have. We make the best of it and we build a career. There are a few of us that wanna go into medicine or law or real estate or investment banking and boom, they start like that and their trajectory is great because they knew right at the outset that's what they wanted to do. The reason I wrote that book was to try and help everybody really figure out where they are in the ocean of life and where they can come ashore with a strategy that works for them so that they can cut out a lot of the bobbing along in the water waiting to drift ashore. So if that's interesting to you, I hope at somewhere down the line, you'll have the opportunity to buy my book. Great, if not, uh, I really do look forward to being in touch with everybody. Christine, I can throw it back to you at 1257. Perfect, well, thank you so much, Glenn, today for your time and expertise and sharing that with us. And thank you to everyone for joining us today. A recording of this session will be sent to the email that you use to sign up. And we hope to see you at another event soon. Have a wonderful day. And of course, go Terps. Well.